So this video is an addendum to a Clip Studio Paint animation tutorial that I made a few years ago. Because since I made that video, I've discovered some ancient magic powers and techniques in this program. But um, I actually didn't learn like a crazy amount since I made the first video. But I learned a bunch of stuff that contradicts stuff that I talk about in the first part. And people still watch that old video like every day. And I get notifications on my phone every time someone comments like, Oh my god, this helped me. And you know, I feel a little guilty when I read those comments because I led you guys astray on some of that stuff. So I'm here today to set the record straight and I'm gonna teach you old dog some new tricks. <laughs> And then, um, I'll also answer some questions that you guys had. Okay, so in the first video, I said that I keep all the lines in one animation folder, and I keep all the colors in another animation folder. That's actually horrible. It actually sucks. And I've never done that since I made the tutorial. Because people in the comments and shit, enlightened me to the fact that in an animation folder you can just make a new folder and set it to be the active frame and then the folder acts like a cell and then you can just put layers and shit in it and then it'll just be like awesome so now all of my animation files are very nice and clean and beautiful and i never did that um horrible stuff from the first video ever again also check this out in the first video, I said that you should manage the names of the cells because when you copy and duplicate and reorder them, the names get messy and like stupid. But here, check this out. If you just go to the timeline and then right click the track and then go to edit track and then rename in timeline order, it will rename them in the timeline order. Uh, I do this like periodically while I animate. Um, every so often when the cell names get really messy. Also, last time I said to like right click and do all this stuff when you want to copy and paste cells, but that's so slow and lame. Like, check this out. Uh, you can just select them and then hold alt and then click and drag and then you can duplicate them that way and it's like a million times faster. Um, a bunch of you little assholes asked me how to do the tweening. Um, so I'll explain it in a more digestible way. So if you have animation in a folder and you enable keyframes, uh, you can start tweening it, which lets you animate transformations on the folder, like sliding it around or making it bigger or making it fade away, etc. You can't edit the drawings while keyframes are enabled, so you have to disable them temporarily if you want to edit the drawings again. So I usually do all the art first, and then I save tweening for last just to make things easier. You can enable and disable keyframes whenever you want though, and the keyframes that you make when you are tweening will remain. So if I have the operation tool selected to object and I select the folder, I'll have this bounding box that controls the entire folder. On the timeline, I can make keyframes where I want stuff to change, and then I can edit the folder by transforming it with the operation tool or transforming it with these settings on the side. So you press this button when you want to make a new keyframe, and the keyframe type determines how the keyframe transitions into the next keyframe. If I have a linear keyframe, the transition from this keyframe to the next will be linear. If I have a hold keyframe, then the keyframe will snap into the next keyframe. If you have a smooth keyframe, it will automatically ease in and out to the next keyframe. The camera works pretty much the same way as tweening. In the first video I said I turn off blank space for my animation files, but now I'm wise and I keep them on because the blank space is really useful for camera movement. 
So if you want camera movement in your animation, you gotta right click the timeline and then make a new camera folder and then put all the animation folders in the camera folder. And then with the operation tool, you can just transform the camera and do the same as you would with tweening. The graph editor acts the same for the camera and for tweening. You press this button and you see these scary graphs and numbers and shit. Now you go in here if you want to adjust the speed at which the tweens that you have occur. This is like a more technical way of getting into your tweens and you go in here to make more precise movements and adjustments. You asked me how to import images bro? Uh, well you can just drag the image in or you can copy and paste the image in, or you can go file import and then import the image, or you can copy something and then make a new thing from the thing you copied from your clipboard even. You asked me how to export. Uh, you just go file, export, and then movie. And then I always do MP4, but you can do AVI if you play like that, and then it just exports everything. If your camera movement doesn't show up, make sure that the animation is in the camera folder. Uh, if you need to export an image sequence, if for example you're compositing your animation in another program, you go file, export, animation, and then image sequence, and then choose the folder, and then uh, you can like fiddle with all these little shits, and then uh, go fetch. You can also export the animation cells rather than exporting the image sequence, which has been really useful for me lately for exporting like 30 different images at once for stuff like website thumbnails and stuff. How do you not give up? Um, well, I don't give up because I don't want to. I think if you're having trouble feeling like giving up, I think you need to be a little more kind to yourself. I think it's super easy to get frustrated if you expect too much from yourself or if you're trying to do stuff on your own but it isn't working. I always try to work hard on whatever I'm doing, but I never try to force stuff if it isn't working. I think the most important part of not giving up with stuff is loving whatever process you're struggling with. If you understand and appreciate the process of the craft, experimenting, failing, learning, getting up and trying again, then it's hardest to give up if you're enjoying every step of the way.